two weeks in China and counting. This is Roger Watson and this is my Connecting Continents column of the 18th of November 2019 for Reflections on Nursing Leadership. From Yangzhou in China. As I write this blog entry, the UK is apparently still part of Europe. I'm very glad to be here in China, if only to escape news, views and arguments over our forthcoming general election. I will be home in time to vote, but I can do that without having to listen to too much sloganeering. Frankly, while the past few years since the Brexit vote have been a media bonanza, I think many of my compatriots want a prolonged period without politics. Hong Kong. You can't have missed the increasingly dreadful news from Hong Kong. I only mention it here because the faculty at my university are now banned from going to Hong Kong, and I noticed that my former university of Sheffield has urgently recalled all exchange students. I was even questioned by senior management at my university for transiting through Hong Kong on my way to China. But the airport is probably one of the safest places now. All movement to it is being closely monitored to ensure that there is no surge of protesters. I'm in daily contact with colleagues in Hong Kong. Some do not expect to return to work for a long time. All the universities are closed and they're struggling to support their students. Wuhan. I'm based in Wuhan, Hubei province, for nearly five weeks. Unfortunately, despite arranging a visa for her, my wife is not with me. She's unable to travel due to acute lower back pain and is in the process of having investigations. The basis for my visit is what is grandly called a high-end foreign expert scholarship. This Chinese government-funded initiative is administered at the provincial level, so mine was awarded by Hubei province. The stipulation is that I spend 30 days in China. Because my academic visitor visa is for 30 days, I must be out on the final day. Nothing can go wrong. My duties, which involve some teaching, are mainly concerned with meeting Master of Nursing students to discuss manuscripts arising from their degree projects. I receive a stream of manuscripts in various states of preparation and a wide range of quality. Nearly all must be substantially rewritten. I ask each student the same thing. Have you selected a journal? The answer is usually no. The palpable cultural difference between these students and ours in the UK is compounded by difficulty in searching the internet. Google and all Google-based platforms, including Google Scholar, are blocked here. Independent thinking is not part of the curriculum in China, and most students here are publication mills for their supervisors. There is also the expectation that I will want to add my name as a co-author to manuscripts that I edit. Unless I've been involved in advising on the research project, I turn down the offer. But it provides an opportunity to give my usual lecture on publication ethics, emphasising eligibility for authorship and referring them to the International Committee of Medical Journal Editors' Guidance. I sound critical, but in fact I'm awestruck by their hard work and ability to write even a poor manuscript in a second language. Yangzhou. I spent a week in Yangzhou, Jiangsu province, at Yangzhou University School of Nursing, teaching Master of Nursing students. I visited Yangzhou earlier this year. Our university teaches a joint undergraduate programme here, so I am only one of a steady stream of University of Hull faculty members visiting Yangzhou. I taught for five days and was lulled into a false sense of security after a great first day with the students. On days two and three I simply could not connect with them and had to abandon my planned lectures. I then suggested another topic to which they agreed, and the final two days were a pleasure. It was a lesson to me, even in the twilight of my teaching career, that there's no substitute for good planning. There were faults on both sides here. The desired content and level could have been better conveyed, but I could have asked for greater clarity about the class. Next time, it will be better. Nursing Open. Some of you may have already seen the news, as my excellent editorial colleague Sarah Erter has been tweeting about it. My journal, Nursing Open, has been accepted for impact measurement by Science Citation Index. The minimum time to achieve this is three years and we've done it in five, which is good. This makes us the first gold open access online nursing journal to be on the list and in 2020 we'll receive our first impact factor. I am, as you can imagine, very pleased and proud of my colleagues on the journal, past and present, who've helped us to achieve this. Nursing Open was conceived over coffee with two Wiley colleagues six years ago in Cork, Ireland, during a meeting of the International Academy of Nursing Editors held in that town on that year. 
Before the end of this year, I will report on my final weeks in China, and that will be my last entry for 2019. This podcast was produced in association with youpublicationslimited.com.